Hi everyone, and welcome to our channel. In this episode, I'd like to take a look at the differences and similarities between the standalone software program, Photo VCarve, and the toolpath option within Aspire, VCarve Pro, and VCarve Desktop, known as the Photo VCarve Toolpath. If we take a look at both software pages, they both have a file drop-down box and a help drop-down box. Of course, the Aspire, VCarve Pro, and Desktop will have other items because they are much larger programs and will only be looking at the toolpath option within those software. To start with the Photo VCarve standalone software, we're going to need to load an image. And once the image is loaded, it will take on the size of the image from its information. This happens to be 960 pixels by 1280. Within the Photo VCarve as well, you can make one color transparent. Simply by clicking on the small box and selecting the color or colors that you want deleted. You don't have that option within Aspire, VCarve Pro, or VCarve Desktop. In the VCarve Pro and Aspire softwares, we would need to create a new file to the size that we're looking for, set our parameters, and select OK. Then we would go in and import the image that we're trying to create the Photo VCarve tooling with. I select the image and import it, and now we can adjust the image or the material size as needed. In the Photo VCarve standalone software, the next option is to set the material size. We could do it in millimeters or inches, set our XY position where we need to, as well as our Z. And once we hit apply, we're, we're at about the same spot we are within the Aspire VCarve Pro or VCarve Desktop. The material has been set up and the image has been brought in. So it's similar, a little bit different order of process, but it's the same end result. We now go on to set the cutting parameters within our Photo VCarve standalone software. This is where you select the bit and the cutting depth and things of that nature. The one thing to know about the Photo VCarve standalone software is that you can choose a V-bit or a ball nose. I'm going to stick with the V-bit for now. Within our cutting parameters, we're going to choose the same bit and the same cut depths. We have a 60 degree V bit, pass depth of 0.2 inch. We're going to say OK. We want our cut depth to be 0 0.05 of an inch. And we're going to just set our line spacing to about 150. I'll explain the difference and what this means shortly. So let's calculate this side as well as we're going to make sure that our toolpath options are set the same. Start depth of 0, maximum cutting depth at 0 0.05. We have a retract above the depth of our cut. Our V-bit is the same, and we're going to simply choose raster. We're going to choose the same 150 percentage, and the line angle is 45 degrees, similarly to our standalone Photo VCarve. You'll notice there's a slider there for density of line spacing. In the Photo VCarve software, standalone software, you have an option between 100% and 200%. Within the toolpath option of Aspire and VCarve, you have the option of between 100 and 400%. The percentage means the distance of the width of cut. So as in this little animation, original cut is X amount of space. If you chose a 100% density, your bit would, would move over that amount. If you chose 200%, your bit would move over twice that distance. More space between each line or each cut. That's what the slider means, the spacing between each cut. Let's calculate.
Within the photo vCarve, you get to see ex immediately what the end results will be like. As opposed to our Aspire or vCarve desktop and pro, we need to actually preview the toolpath. Within our standalone software of Photo vCarve, we can actually preview and select the color. We're going to choose Canadian Maple, choose the black, and you can see the end result. It shows what our estimated time will be because of our rapid rate and our scale factor. This is similar to the small estimating clock within the other softwares. And of course, we can choose our post processor to save the toolpath. Within Aspire, VCarve Pro, and Desktop, we can change the color of the toolpath, as well as the material. And you can see it's pretty much the same. So, in the end, the differences are very small. Photo VCarve, you can choose a ball nose, whereas the toolpath option, you cannot. There are other options, including that selected vector. Let's take a look at that. Another feature within the toolpath option of Aspire and VCarve is to choose selected vectors. It's one of my personal favorite options within this type of software. The process is you simply bring in an image and draw your vectors, as I've done here, for example, of a spiral, actually two spirals, that I then copy and move to their own layer. And I'm going to join them together at a common point. So I have one long vector. I drew a vector around the portrait of Rod Serling so I can use the clipping tool. There's my vector. There's my profile vector. Making sure I choose them in the same direction. You may have seen me use this several times in previous videos. And I trim, keeping all the vectors with, within that boundary vector. And of course, I add some text. Now that I have trimmed the vectors, I select those, make sure the picture is selected as well. And I'm going to use the Photo VCarve toolpath with selected vectors. And we preview. It's a nice option to have. Just to continue the project, I select the text and create a V carving toolpath. Another feature within the toolpath option of Aspire and vCarve is the ability to project your photo vCarve vectors or toolpath onto a 3D model. So in this case, I brought in an image of a mountain with a river running through them. I'm going to lighten it up so you can actually see what I've done. I drew some vectors and created some simple components from those vectors. Just to make things easy, I made a copy of the visible model, so I'm only dealing with one component.
Now my typical approach in this would have been to take the image and create a component from that as a skin that would lay over those components and of course generate a finished toolpath, a small ball nose. Once it's been calculated, we can preview the toolpath. And this is what I would have expected to get. But let's try something slightly different. We're going to go back to our modeling tab and hide the component of the skin, only showing the original components that created the mountains. I'm going to create a finished toolpath of that using a larger ball nose, a quarter inch ball nose with a large step over. So my cutting times will be reduced significantly. And once that toolpath is calculated, and once we preview the toolpath of the mountains, I'm going to make sure that the picture, the image is selected, and I'm going to create a photo V-carve toolpath based upon that. And we'll use the hatch option. We'll calculate. Of course, we're going to project that toolpath onto the 3D model. And then we can preview it and change the color as need be. The end result is similar, slightly different, but it gives you the same feeling of a river running through the mountainside. But here's the big issue, the cutting time. If we take a look at the estimate using the toolpath summary, you'll see that our first toolpath using only the 3D finish says it's going to take almost 11 hours. Our second approach using the Photo V-Carve toolpathing is going to finish this in over six hours. Quite a difference. So the Photo V-Carve approach may be a benefit of some projects. So in summary, the difference really is, in the standalone software, you can have a choice of a ball nose or a V-bit. But within the toolpath option of Aspire and V-Carve, even though you can only choose a V-bit, you can use your own vectors, and you can project the toolpath onto a 3D component. So those are the differences. Not too much, but slightly different. I'm gonna put a link to both Aspire V-Carve as well as the Photo V-Carve trial versions down below. Try them. See if you like them. You may want to buy one or buy both. I hope this helped so you can understand a little bit better about each software. The differences, the pluses, the minuses, and which one you may want or need. If you'd like to learn more about the software, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the bell to be reminded of our new videos. And of course, as always, if you need help, send me an email, mm at mazalik.com. I'll be glad to help. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Enjoy.